is, is about 370 million people throughout the world, 5,000 languages, 9,000 different tribes, and making up about 5% of the total population. In actual fact, 15% of the world poor are indigenous people, indigenous tribal First Nations people. What I am interested in, what I think we should be interested in, is how us as uh, researchers can actually make a difference to understanding how these indigenous peoples are using the resources on the ground. We are particularly interested in tribal peoples in tropical forests, about 1,000 different tribes in the forests of the Amazon, in the Congo Basin and Far East. About 70% of those tribals are actually found in Asia, but a very large proportion of them are also in the Amazon, are in the Congo Basin that themselves. How much do we know about how they use the resources? How much can we actually use that information in order to make a difference to the people on the ground? There are loads of information out there, generally sort of, um, you know, um, taken out with a, with a very interesting perspective, a very anthropological perspective. I have nothing against anthropologists, but um, this information is, is scanty, is actually all over the place. What we are interested in is how these particular people are using the resources that actually make them part of that ecosystem. What are the plants? What are the animals that they use? How do they actually uh, target these particular um, you know, products and how they use them, not just for themselves, but also to trade with them? You know, let's understand the entire picture. And we have to do it because the situation is dire. The situation is dire because some parts of the world, these forests of the world, are being actually uh, taken away from us, taken away from them. These tribal peoples will actually dis disappear if we don't do something about it. Our interest has been the Congo Basin. The Congo Basin is a wonderful part of the world, tropical, uh, lush forests, not all the same type, there are different types, swamp forests, highland forests, and also sort of, um, a terra firma forest, a wonderful array of different species. We talk about a thousand birds, 10,000 different plant species, 1,000 or so of different tree species, etc. But at the end of the day, all this biodiversity, which is meaningful and we need to conserve, will be nothing without the people within these areas. You know, we talk about the wonderful elephants. You know, we must conserve the elephants, of course. But how about the people in them? What about the indigenous people that are part of these ecosystems? They have been part of these ecosystems for about 20,000 years. How much do we know how they use the resources? How much support do we give them to understand what they do? And what can we do to change the state of the world? Well, their world. Pygmies. You know, we call them pygmies. It's not a derogatory term. It's a way that actually encompasses a very large array of different people that work and live uh, integri uh, integrally within the tropical rainforest of the Congo Basin. What information do we have about them? Well, there's been maps like these that actually tell us something about the possible distribution of different groups within the Congo Basin. There's a wonderful one by Sir Baucher with used information that was available. It gives us these little polygons of color that show you where these particular groups are. But the fact of the matter is that we don't know how many there are there and where there are. What we have done through the BRI and C4 and many other partners is actually trying to calculate and understand where the distribution of these particular pygmy groups are. What we have said is that, what we have come up with, is there are 900,000, possibly 900,000 pygmies in the Congo Basin against 29 million of non-pygmies. So surely, if you do the maths, there's got to be some sort of issue if both groups are actually taking out resources from the Congo Basin forest. Pygmies rely on the meat that they get, not only on the meat, but also on yams and many other plant products that are part of the Congo Basin Forest. So how much of that resource are actually pygmies sort of, uh, extracting? How much of that is being conflicted or, or being uh, competed with 
by the 29 million people, other people that are actually using the same resources as the pygmies. We'd never known that. We'd never actually understood that problem, and we'd never actually posed that problem, in fact. There's been a lot of work done in terms of, you know, um, you know, music, uh, you know, in uh, the way society works within the pygmies themselves, but the actual fact, what is the competition? for resources such as bushmeat between the non-pygmies and the pygmies. Because we know, for example, non-pygmies are very much involved in the whole issue of commercial trade of bushmeat. Our calculations actually show us, if we're right, that there's 219,000 um, um, 219, tons of bushmeat that the pygmy groups, as far as we know, the 900,000 are taking very much more from the long pygmies. If we look at the map of where that occurs, all the red areas are areas where non-pygmies are actually extracting at the rate of 70% of their actual catches is actually for trade. There are only few areas now within the Congo Basin where pygmies can be allowed to do what they want without interference, without conflict. If we look at the overlap between areas such as protected areas, which is a very topical uh, uh, issue nowadays, we know that there are many countries in the, in the Congo Basin where there is a potential conflict between protected areas and the resources that the pygmies actually need. My issue is that that information has been collected by a huge number of people. We have been the one that actually um, you know, brought all that together, but it's not enough. It's not enough because if we don't actually use that information to come up with policies that actually protect the people on the ground, we're gonna get this picture uh, as, as a reminder that not just um, the, the elephants are gonna disappear, but also the local indigenous peoples in the Congo Basin. This is not the picture I want to see on my wall. A sepia-colored, you know, old picture of pygmies and elephants should not be a reminder that we have done nothing to understand and protect the indigenous people that have been there for 20,000 years. Thank you.